recording. All right. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Teddy's generative design shelf lesson. Um, we're going to go ahead and teach everyone how to uh, use... Uh, I mean, by, by the end of this little lesson, you'll know how to do a pretty simple generative design project. Um, we're going to be doing the structural uh, system between the bracket fixture of a shelf, the thing that you screw screw into the wall, and uh, the shelf face itself, the stuff that you would put on top of a shelf. Uh, I mean, the face that you would put items on, on a shelf. We're, we're going to be uh, generating the structure between those two um, objects. So... Let's go ahead and start this project by creating those two objects. Um, I'm actually going to start by drawing a wall just so I can visualize this a little better. I'll draw a little 10 foot by 10 foot wall. It's not too little. There we go. Then I'm going to go ahead and extrude that out six inches just because I think it's or five inches. There we go. New bot. Oh, and uh, just have it set to new body. It should default to that, but the ones after this won't default to it. So keep a keep an eye out for that. We're always going to be doing new bodies here, just because uh, we won't be able to select um, them as different obstacles and stuff unless we do that. So we've made our wall, and now I'm just going to make a quick fixture on this wall. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw like a four inch by 12 inch rectangle on it. And we're gonna need some uh, holes in here to put screws in. So I'm gonna draw some circles in it as well. But first I'm gonna quadrant it. One and One second, actually, let me delete that long line and put two lines so I can use my midpoints to make this a little easier. There we go. And I'm just going to draw a circle here, like a one inch circle. And then another circle here, another one inch circle. Oops, that did not come out as a one inch circle like I told it to. It's because I bumped my mouse. There we go. All right, so we got those two circles and we got all these quadrants. We can go ahead and just delete these lines that I used. We're gonna go ahead and hit uh, finish sketch. And we're gonna grab this fixture, this little bracket thing. We're gonna extrude it out uh, one inch. And there we go. So um, we've got the first part done and now we need to draw how the shelf part. So this is where it's got a screw into the wall, but now we need to draw the place that we'll, we uh, a shelf would hold all the items on. So let's go ahead and offset a plane from the top of this bracket. Let's go ahead and bring it up like four inches. There we go. We're at a sketch on this plane now. And I'm going to go ahead and Make a mirror line. Be as long as we need. And just go ahead and, uh, by the way, your fixture can look like anything you want. It could be a circle, it could be a bunch of different things, but so long as it has uh, places you can uh, put screws into and it's pretty symmetrical, we're good to go. We, we want to keep things symmetrical for a uh, generative design or else it'll come out looking a little, little weird. Um, so we want to keep it pretty symmetrical. So that's why I'm making a mirror line for this. Let's go ahead and just make our shelf system. I'm just gonna make a shape like that. I'll go ahead and mirror all of this now across my mirror line. There we go. Boom. Cool, we're gonna hit finish sketch. And we're gonna extrude this out one inch or half an inch or something. Yeah, one inch looks okay. And uh, have it set to new body. Oh, did I set my other one to new body? I don't think I did. No, I had to set the join. 
New body. New body all the time. Even I mess up, though. There we go. Cool. Um, so this is all we need to get into the generative, uh, generative design space. We just need our fixture and our, uh, I guess, shelf. And it will... Our goal for this is for it to generate mass in between this face and this face, or just this whole bracket in general. And... Uh, have it um, do that for us, basically. So let's go ahead and jump into the generative design space. Which uh, you just click the design tool up here. And it should be right underneath design. And if it's not there, uh, you need to register your um, college email so that you can uh, get the generative design for free. Or if you're paying, um, just keep using your uh, cloud credits and stuff. So we're in the generative design space now, and what we're going to do here is we're going to work from left to right. Um, we're not going to have to do anything with guide, really, but uh, or we're, we don't need to do anything with study right now either, because it makes a study for us uh, right at the beginning. But here's where you would go if you wanted to make another study. Um, so let's go on over to edit model. And um, we're about to get into that, but I'm actually going to skip ahead a little bit to uh, preserve geometry and obstacle geometry, just so edit model kind of makes a little bit more sense. So preserve geometry. What this is, is this is the geometry that's going to uh, be saved in the generative design. Like, it'll be part of it. Um, and the two parts that we want for that are our fixture bracket and our shelf uh, place. And that's because we want to actually save these in our design. So it will include them now. So those will be saved in our design. Um, like all of it. Like all the geometry we made for this will be in the uh, design at the end as well. There we go. So we've got that. And now for obstacle geometry, this will be where we don't want it to generate mass. And um, I have this wall here because... I don't really want it to generate mass in the wall that it is going to be fixtured to, so or else it won't fit right. So I'm going to go ahead and select that as my obstacle geometry, and it should turn red. There we go. Um, so looking at this now, we we could generate a generative design from this, but we don't have anything telling it to stop it from putting mass on the top of our shelf or like coming up on the edges or anything, or it, it'll put, we, we don't have anything telling it to not fill in these holes either with mass. So what we really need to do is we need to uh, create some more obstacle geometry. And we're gonna do that in the edit model mode. So we're gonna go ahead and hit edit model. Ooh, everything kind of went like dark for me. That is odd. Hold on. Let me try and fix that. What just happened here? The home view. There we go. <laughs> Edit model. There we go. That was a weird. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and... Oh, dear. Well. Sometimes that happens. We'll be right back. All right. One second. Let me just send that so that I can fix it later on. Okay. I actually didn't close my Fusion all the way, so I'll just keep using this. Um, so, we're in the edit model space. So we've got our shelf... And we've got our uh, fixture here. And um, we need to edit this model in a way so that we can put obstacle geometry so that it doesn't get on top of our shelf or around it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Sketch on the top of this shelf. And I'm just going to go ahead and offset this top uh, about an inch and a half. So 1.5. That was 15. There we go. And I'm going to hit OK. What I'm going to do with that is I'm actually going to extrude it down about two inches. 
so that I get this uh, little perimeter around this face so that it doesn't like come wrapping up around the edges or anything like that. Um, and I'm going to set his new body as always. Boom. And then another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also go ahead and select both of these faces and extrude them straight up as far as I want really. Just, just to a point where the generative won't recognize it as a place I can go. This is plenty room. Uh, I'm going to set that as a new body as well. There we go. And that is almost everything we need to do for... Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. Sorry, I switched my uh, camera view on you guys. Um, so we, I, I almost have all my obstacle geometry created. We need one more thing though. We need something to tell it not to go into where we need to screw stuff into. Um, and also I'd like to have that be, uh, giving us some tool clearance too, just so it doesn't encase that entire, uh, screw circle, uh, uh screw hole, um, with material. Cause I got to get in there with like a screwdriver too, so. I gotta make sure that it doesn't just make a big orb around <laughs> my obstacle geometry for this. So I'm gonna give it a tool clearance as well. But to do this, we're gonna go connector obstacle. We're gonna go start of shaft. And we're gonna go end of shaft. There we go. And then I'm gonna give it a bolt head. And then I'll also give it some tool clearance. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take this tool clearance and uh, Extrude it just past my uh, my shelf here. There we go. I'm gonna hit OK. And we're gonna want to do that to the other one as well. So hit connect connector obstacle. Select the first circle, then the back circle. Give it a bolt head. Give it some tool clearance. And and you can change the diameters on all of these to anything that you think you might need. Um, just because I know these are going to be screws and it's just a screwdriver, like, this should be okay. But you do want to keep it symmetrical, so make sure those are ex extruded to the same length and also the same diameter. I'm just using the default one, really. There we go. That should be good. I'm going to hit okay. And we're going to hit finish edit model. And um, the tool clear, the, the connector obstacle will automatically come in as an obstacle geometry because um, that's just how that tool works. But this other stuff that we made doesn't automatically come in. So we're gonna just gotta go back to obstacle geometry and reselect both of those and make sure that they're red. And make sure that your uh, shelf is still green too. You don't wanna accidentally click on that. So now that you have that, all we get to do now, th this is all the modeling that we need to do for this. So we don't need to do anything else with modeling. But we did, what we do need to do is we need to add um, some stuff to our load case. We, we need to add some weights and stuff for um, the generative design to solve. So how much weight do we want on this shelf and also where is it going to be fixed to? So um, it's gotta be fixed to the wall from this bracket so we're going to go ahead and go structural constraint. This face is fixed to the wall because it has a screw in it or it will have a screw in it. So we just may, we just leave this as being fixed because that's what we're uh, kind of solving for. Um, so this being fixed, how much weight can this shelf hit, uh, have basically. So we're going to select that face fixed. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and give it a load. We can't actually see the top of our shelf right now, so I'm gonna hide some bodies. I think it's uh, this one right here. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna t uh, select the top of my shelf now. It'll automatically give me a perpendicular weight on it. And that weight, let's go ahead and give it, let, let's have this shelf be able to hold 200 pounds of force. So long as the wall can handle that and our bracket can handle that, but that's that's a different question. That that's that has to do with how uh, your fixtures work. We're just doing the the shelf itself. So magnitude two hundred. There we go. And if we go into our load case one right here, which is our active one, we have loads. We've got the force of gravity on it because that's everywhere, and then the force of our. Uh, 
of our uh, shelf weight. And you can add more situations, more load cases, by just right-clicking load cases and uh, going to new load case. But you don't really need to do that for this shelf unless you're, you want it to design for if someone's lifting up on it as well, or if someone bumps against it, or anything else like that. That's got to be a new load case. Actually, sure. Let's go ahead and add a new load case so you guys can know how to do that. So when adding a new load case, it's just it's basically just a new situation where the loads change. So um, we need to reselect what's fixed because it's a completely new situation. So we could design this for if the shelf was fixed and this wasn't, but that would never happen for our shelf. So we're not going to solve for that. But what could happen is maybe someone's lifting up on it from the bottom. So we're going to, this is fixed. And we're going to give it a new load. And this time we're going to come from the bottom and imagine if someone is putting... Um, 50 pounds of force. There we go. On the bottom of it. So there we go. There's our force on the bottom. And that's in load case number two. So we've got two load cases here. And that's fine. Uh, we're done with design conditions. Unless you guys want to imagine some other situations that your shelf would come up to. Just go ahead and make a new load case and just do it for that situation. Uh, but other, if you're done with that. Go ahead and uh, move on from design conditions to design criteria. Um, I'm going to leave mine on minimize mass just because that's kind of how I would imagine shelf manufacturing would be is get the most uh, uh, rigidity out of the least amount of mass that you can. Um, I'll ha have it stay a safety factor of 2.02. That just means instead of designing to be exactly at the breaking point, it's designed to be twice as strong as the breaking point. Uh, so that's good. We're going to hit OK. We're going to go over to manufacturing, and here's where you guys actually get to choose your manufacturing methods. We have unrestricted, which is just uh, no manufacturing method in the world could actually create it right now, but maybe in the future it could. Um, and it'll design a very alien-looking structure that looks like bone. Um, additive will also make a structure that looks like that, but... Um, It'll be more or less like that depending on your like minimum thickness and stuff. I'm actually going to turn this to one millimeter. Just because it'll uh, give me something a little cooler. Uh, overhang angles, you can change that too. Um, but I'm, I'm going to leave mine like that. Now milling, um, this is if you're going to be using a CNC machine. Three axis will allow you to make some pretty cool things. But there's also five axis in here and 2.5. 2.5 will give you uh, a very lower dimensioned looking object, whereas 5 axis will give you like a pretty alien one looking as well. Uh, and you can change like your minimum tool diameter and stuff depending on what you have access to in your machine shop. Um, but yeah, this is uh, all of how it would uh, generate based on your manufacturing method that you have access to. So once you have that, you're going to go ahead and hit OK. And now you're going to come over to materials and we're going to add some study materials. I think it already loads in aluminum. I'm going to want to put in stainless steel as well. And then I'm also going to want to put in plastic for the additive or whatever kind of other manufacturing method that I can use with plastic. Um, and there we go. Now that we're at that, we can go to our pre-check. So long as none of these are red, you're probably fine. But be sure to read through them. Most of these are just like, oh, this material doesn't support cost estimation right now. So uh, hopefully it's all just that. Oh, yeah, too, maybe too large to be 3D printed. Yeah, um, I, I don't have access to a 3D printer this big. But um, some people do. So um, Some bodies or components are hidden. Oh, this is actually one that I needed to look at because I need to bring that body back. There we go. Now it'll be included on my... Uh, generation. Now we're going to go ahead and pre-check it. Or, sorry, not pre-check, uh, preview it. And hopefully all of our material ends up going from this bracket up into that face. There we go. That's what we're looking for. We're... It's going to go ahead and uh, do this whole little loading thing and while it figures it out. But if it's looking like it's, it's what you want, you're probably good to go. There we go. Yeah. It's avoiding my um, 
my my tool clearance, which is what I told it to do. It's using these two uh, preserved geometries, that's perfect. So once you have that, and it looks uh, good to go, nothing weird's happening with the previewer, you can go ahead and go over to generate. Will that stop the previewer? Yeah, that's fine. You go ahead and hit yes. And uh, you use your cloud credits, which if you have an education license, you have unlimited of, so don't worry about that. And you hit generate one study. And then, uh, oh yeah, I gotta save this. I'll save it as the shelf. There we go. And you hit save. And then you wait overnight for your generation to uh, go. And you can take a look at it, watch thumbnails while it starts trying to solve it. And it's a... Uh, pretty cool. I, I like to do mine overnight just because it does take a while. Uh, but so long as it doesn't come up with like any error messages here, it says job on cloud, you're good to go. So uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, here we go. Here's the space that it'll give you and it'll start generating thumbnails and stuff. But there you go. If you followed me along pretty well, I hope you added your own little twist on my lesson and you made your own unique little shelf. Um, and it'll be done in the morning. All right. See you guys.